friends, and welcome to another episode of News You Missed. This week, I thought we would take a little break from the conflict in Ukraine to talk about some lesser known but equally important news. Our top story today, it turns out that last summer's heat wave made Canadian male bees ejaculate to death. It's interesting because last summer's lockdown did the same thing to male humans. Turns out that excessive heat can make drones spontaneously and fatally ejaculate. And that's just what the heat wave brought to Western Canada last year. Oh, here comes the plug for global warming. This is how they're gonna sell men on it. You wouldn't want to ejaculate to death like the bees, would you? Get yourself a Prius if you don't want to be us. <laughs> Teen has legs and fingers amputated after eating leftover rice. Now, I don't know if these two events are related, but if they're not, uh, this is a very sadistic headline. Contaminated leftovers led to extreme and tragic results last year in Massachusetts. Doctors had to amputate both legs and all 10 fingers of a 19-year-old college student, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. The teen had eaten leftover rice, chicken, and lo mein noodles. Uh, I don't know why you would just say leftover rice when he ate some old Chinese food restaurant chicken, which we all know is mystery meat. After he finished his meal, he was fine initially, but 20 hours later, things took a turn for the worse. The student started experiencing abdominal pain and nausea. He started throwing up with everything he spewed out being colored a strange red. That's the MSG penetrating your intestines. Upon arrival at the second hospital, the doctors managed to get more information from the student's family. The friend who'd eaten the same food as him puked once, but did not develop the same serious symptoms. They also found out that the student was relatively healthy. He did smoke cigarettes and weed and enjoyed a drink every now and then, but nothing in his habits could explain his bizarre symptoms. Oh yes, relatively healthy. He smoked cigarettes, did drugs, drank alcohol, and ate five-day-old Chinese food. That is the picture of health in 2020 America. The student ended up staying at a hospital for several weeks. Unfortunately, his hands and feet started getting necrotic. To prevent the necrosis from spreading, the doctors had no option to remove his legs below the knee. They were also forced to amputate each and every one of his fingers. His heart and other organs also began to fail. In response, the doctors gave him a pacemaker, which he had on him for 13 days. That is terrible. That is fucking awful. I actually got really, really bad food poisoning from eating leftover rice, and I spent the entire night shitting and puking my guts out. I prayed to Jesus. I brought my pillow from my bed and put it next to the toilet. I wrote a note to my mother saying my final goodbyes. Baltimore student graduates without learning to read. I know I'm not the only one. You know, I'm not really that surprised. Kids out there are graduating without knowing that boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. Metaverse app allows kids into virtual strip clubs. I mean, what difference does it make? Have you seen the show Euphoria? It looks to me like kids are running the strip clubs in real life. U.S. House candidate sorry for intoxication during sleepover. This one ought to be good. A U.S. House candidate in Oklahoma has apologized after, after reports that she became intoxicated at a Valentine's Day weekend sleepover for middle school age girls berated several of the children and vomited in a hamper. I have so many fucking questions about that sentence. Democrat Abby Broyles, 32, told television station KFOR that she had an adverse reaction after drinking wine and taking sleep medication given to her by a friend. Was the friend 13? Instead of helping me sleep, I hallucinated. Yeah, that's called being drunk and that's not a hallucination. It usually just means that, you're, uh, that you lose your inhibitions. And if you are the type of 32 year old woman that often berates uh, middle school children, you'll just be more of that person when you're drunk. Not a hallucination though. She said she was invited to the slumber party by a good friend from law school who was the mother of one of the girls. Parents and at least one of the girls who were at the sleepover told the online news outlet non-doc with, which first reported the story that Broyles used profanity and berated several of the 12 and 13 year old girls at the party, commenting on one girl's acne and another's Hispanic ethnicity. What are you looking at, you dirty little Mexican? Why are you always parking your car on the lawn? I wanna say sorry from the bottom of my heart. I apologize for any hurt or damage or trauma that my behavior when I didn't know what I was doing caused. I like how she keeps saying she didn't know 
what she was doing. I mean, I am no stranger to being blackout drunk, but you still got to apologize for your behavior as if you were uh, fully aware. I apologize for getting on top of the table and calling your mother a whore in the middle of her birthday dinner. I'm sorry. In a statement provided to the Associated Press on Tuesday, Boyle said she doesn't believe she would have said the things she's accused of saying. Oh, now she's accused of saying them. Now she doesn't. I mean, did nobody film this? Uh, in the age of the iPhones, maybe the younger generation's getting a little better and they're going back to the basics. Nobody filmed this woman screaming racial slurs at a 12 year old Mexican child of saying that she has no plans to drop out of the race. The things I'm accused, I'm accused to have said are not who I am. Yeah, they are just real deep down. That's the thing about being blackout drunk. Anything you do is a little bit in there, isn't it? It's a little bit in there, isn't it? Speaking of feminism, from Valencia to Bilbao, this will be the new feminist houses with a larger kitchen and no master bedroom. Oh, the glory. The main feminist theories on habitability maintain that the current distribution of housing is the result of heteropatriarchy and the role of caretakers that has traditionally been assigned to women. Oh yeah, it's definitely the result of the heteropatriarchy. That's why we now live in a time where the woman owns the whole house and the man retreats into the unfinished basement like a stray rabid animal. I mean, just look at this room right here. Do you think my boyfriend had any input into decorating this room? Do you think he was out there picking the perfect throw pillows and picking the perfect nine inch deep console table for our front door? Do you think he thought to himself, I just wanna create a beautiful mid-century modern slash boho vibe. I don't fucking think so. And the role of caretakers that has traditionally been assigned to women. For this reason, constructions with a gender perspective. Uh, caretakers that has traditionally been assigned to women. I don't think the role of caretaker was assigned to women by anyone. You know who I think assigned us to the role of caretaker? Our warm and comforting energy. That's what probably assigned us. What is so bad about being a fucking caretaker? Like, what do these bitches want? Is there something so bad about taking care of shit? Just everybody's like, I don't care. I don't even wanna care. I'm not a caretaker. I'm a do not care taker. For this reason, constructions with a gender perspective have begun to proliferate in recent years. In order to incorporate the gender perspective in housing policies, it is more important than ever to guarantee the visibility of all the areas where domestic, domestic tasks are carried out and to guarantee the participation of all people in these tasks. This sounds even more like the heteropatriarchy um, having its way. I mean, you got your slave woman in the kitchen and you got to keep an eye on her all times, at least before she could go hide in the kitchen and, you know, suck back some of grandpa's old uh, cough medicine. Now you got to keep an eye on her everywhere she goes. You got to watch her do the laundry. You got to watch her wash the dishes. So you can criticize her from the other room. Another of the ideas that this regulation intends to introduce is the D higher cur D, I can't even say these fucking words anymore. The D hierarchization of spaces so that there can no longer be a larger master bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. You know who doesn't complain at all all about the size of your bedroom versus theirs. Cats, which is what you're gonna end up spending the rest of your life with. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm now going to retreat to the kitchen before my master gets home. Um, you know, I thought maybe I would, I would get him a drink when he gets in the door just in case he's been stressed. I don't want him to reintroduce hitting. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all next week. Bye. If you guys don't get on board and get yourselves a Prius, all the men are going to come to death.